I can't get away from, from this. It's like the Holy Spirit is saying we're in a time of Holy Ghost fire in the world. We need that. I say some things about politicians. Uh, and let me be clear, I'm not saying anything good. And I'm, I'm not in their favor. I just want to clear that up. Uh, I'm not on anyone's bandwagon. Nobody has asked me to endorse them. I don't know that they could hold up to what I would want to put them through. And I have, I have met with uh, senatorial candidates before that asked me about endorsing them, uh, spirit-filled people. And I've, I've talked with other people about you know, them and wanting me to endorse them. And I just ask a lot of questions. I want to know where they stand. And I, I don't want to hear a politician's election promises. You know, they, they have been crafted by a writer and a speech writer to say what people want to hear. We, we want to hear hope. Yeah. You know, we're hungry for hope in America. Amen. We're hungry for a foundation to stand on, and so they work that. They, they really work that, and I, that's okay to make a promise, but don't make a promise of something that you think I want to hear when you're already planning to change once you get elected. I don't want to be the one, uh, you don't want a pastor that would sell out to the highest bidder. Amen. You want somebody that will stay in the fight. Amen. You know, you don't want, uh, Jesus talked about wolves in sheep's clothing mm -hmm. that could fleece the sheep and destroy the sheep or hurt the sheep. You don't want that. You wouldn't want, you wouldn't respect me and I wouldn't respect myself. But I believe God wants you to be the same way with your family where you hold a line, where you believe God is God, and you believe the Word of God is the final authority, that the Word of God is it, the Word of God is true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. The older I get, the more I'm solid on that. I don't have, there's some things I'm willing to compromise on, my personal views, my, you know, I might could change a little bit if through just my education I missed it somewhere. But when it comes to the Word of God, I believe it. I believe it. It's it. It's the final authority. There's no other word. You know, I've heard other religions say, don't you believe there can be other truths? This is the final truth. This is God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. That means this is God in written form. That's what it means. Jesus was God come in the flesh. He was God come in the likeness of a man born in the likeness of a man, lived on earth for 33 years, received the anointing at 12 years of age. Then when he's 30 years old, he received the anointing to preach and teach the word of God. Luke 4:18 tells us that. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he goes on down the line, five different categories of people he ministers to, the brokenhearted, the bound, the imprisoned, the sick, and he does it. Everywhere he touched, he did what he said he would do. Yeah. And I believe today when it comes to healing, if you don't get healed, it's not God's fault. Right. I have to say, I don't, I don't mean that to be ugly. I don't mean that to be too harsh. But I can't say that it was God's fault. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He'll save anybody that comes to him. Amen. 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 He'll save me. Well, if you're born again, if, you're, if you've accepted Jesus as Savior, would you raise your hand? You've accepted Jesus as Savior. Look around. Look around. If God can save this bunch, he can save anybody. <clears throat> Amen. You say, well, I don't know if God can save my kids. Your parents said that about you one day. Amen. And now you're saved. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? He can save anybody, and he's always on time. He's always on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today. Well, let's come to this. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. John the Baptist is talking. I want to talk to you about the Holy Ghost today. Is it a little bit cool in here? It's 
just what I thought it would be. Matthew 3.11, John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to, to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hmm. I want to skip over to the book of Luke 24 and verse 49 for just a moment, if you would. Jesus is talking. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. That's the Holy Ghost. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued or equipped or empowered with power from on high. He's talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Go to the book of Acts chapter 1, if you would, please. Keep in mind that Luke is the one that penned the Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 1, verse 5, John truly baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Verse 8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Let me narrow that down. You'll be witnesses unto me in Council Bluffs in Omaha and Iowa and Nebraska and in the United States and all over the world. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. I could preach right there and say that's why a lot of churches have no power because they're not in one accord. They're trying to cast out devils and rebuke devils and, you know, getting, you know, Holy Ghost voodoo dolls and sticking pins in it thinking that's going to change somebody. But they're not in one accord with each other. Heard a story one time, this lady, uh, she, was, she asked her husband, do you feel that? He said, no. She said, do you feel that? He said, no. She had a little voodoo doll upstairs. She was sticking pins in it. Do you feel that? <laughs> I heard a, a, a oneness preacher talking. You know, they, they don't believe in the Trinity. They just believe in... The Lord our God is one God. It's a monotheistic view. The Jewish people believe that. The Lord our God is one God. He and he alone is holy. But, and <clears> T.D. <throat> Jakes is uh, uh, oneness. But anyway, this guy said, I can preach oneness. I can really preach it. I get anointed preaching it. I can really go big time preaching it. He said, I, I believe in oneness. That's what he was saying. He said, but, he said, I'm surprised that our church isn't one, that we're divided. You want to be filled with power, you better not be divided with anybody. He said, but pastor, there's some, I love the Lord, I love you, pastor, and, and I love our church, and there's a couple of people in our church that kind of get under my skin, and they got my parking place. And, uh, man, I went to Walmart the other day, and I felt like fighting before I got out of there. And pastor, I went down the highway, and boy, there were some people just so aggravated, I wanted to praise the Lord with one finger, and... Uh, and you say, but I, I, don't, I don't know how to get away from that. You need to start thinking about how much you want the anointing of God in your life. That will help you a whole lot right there. Because yeah. you'll, you'll find out if you want to say something smart alecky and blow the anointing. You say, well, Pastor, I just, I just felt like saying something and I couldn't help myself. You're lying. Right. You can help yourself. Because I have discovered that what your Jesus said Whatever's in a man's heart, his mouth will say. Where your treasure is, where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. What your heart is full of, your mouth will share. See, so, Pastor, they just caught me by surprise, and I just cussed a blue streak. So it was already in there. And the leash wasn't very tight. Hmm. Somebody smarted off at me in a restaurant, and I just smarted off back to them. Well, 
and you don't know what you ate after they brought your food out, mm -hmm. then you needed to pray and cast the devil off your house later. And so I don't understand why the Lord's not answering my prayer. Well, you threw the barrier up. You threw the strife out there. Pastor, I wish my husband just understood me more. He's trying. Listen, us men are limited with our understanding. We are, we are, listen ladies, we love you, but we are very limited with our ability to understand you. Okay. Okay, guys. All right, men. How many of you husbands, when you go somewhere in your car, you have a helper? Uh-huh. You don't have to be born again to amen me on that one. Guys, you can be driving down the road. You don't have, you don't have, you don't, you can just, you can check out mentally. You hear? Brake lights. Brake lights ahead. You get that too? Turn signal still on. Traffic on this side. Turn here. Turn here. Take a left up here. Turn left. Come on. Don't leave me up here, guys. Come on. <laughs> saw this thing and was like, I have a little helper in my car. <laughs> she does. She helps me. Sometimes I need it, but whether or not. So ladies, we're trying to understand you. We're giving it all we got. I officiated a wedding yesterday, and you know, I, I used a scripture where Peter talks about it. He said, men, study your wives that you may live with them according to knowledge. I said, the reason the Bible says that is we have no knowledge about women. We need God's help. We need heaven to help us. Amen. Those of you don't, that don't amen me, I know you're under the gun, so that's okay. <laughs> These guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So, ladies, we're trying. We, we're, we're trying. Am I trying? You're doing good. Okay. And so, guys, we, we have to study to try to live with our wives according to knowledge. And once we, once we start trying to live with our wives and wives, it says, wives, respect your husbands. And I've heard this a lot over the years. Well, I don't respect him. It's not your job to wait till he's respectable. It's your job to love him and show him respect so he can rise up to it. And it's our job, husbands, to love our wives. When she might hit a hormonal impasse. Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm. Help us, Father. But we're trying, and I know you're trying. I can tell when people are trying because they love God and they want to go farther. They want to walk in the anointing. And husbands and wives make concessions, not compromises, but we make concessions. Or you can call it a compromise if you want. Because one of the things I've learned, guys and, and ladies, I'll just go ahead and say this. Some things are not worth fighting about. It's, some things aren't worth being right about in the long run because you have to look at it in a bigger picture what's it going to be what's it what's it going to be worth 10 years from now is it going to hold the same value then as it does now because you're going to be getting older and everything's changing and you want life to be good there are some things you need to learn to compromise on <clears throat> but it's so important to be one together and I, I said all of that to get to this they were in one accord in one place and when they got in one accord and in one place, what happened? Suddenly, 
Suddenly, say suddenly. Suddenly, your bank accounts can change. Suddenly, oh, everything can change. Praise God. Suddenly, suddenly, a sound from heaven. When you get in unity in a church, when you get in the whole church is one, the whole church is unified, the whole church wants to see somebody helped and somebody blessed. This side wants to see that side blessed and this side wants to see that side blessed and those in the back want to see those in the front blessed and those in the front want to see everybody blessed and the children in the back blessed. We want to see who's driving by the highway blessed. So they want to come in and see where the blessing's coming from. And when you start walking in that kind of unity, somebody that you got upset with last week comes to church and sits close to you. They bless. Why? Because you made a choice not to get in strife. You made a choice not to get out of unity. You made a choice to stay together. You made a choice still hold your wife's hand, guys, when you didn't want to hold her hand. Oh, Lord. That's been a good place. Yeah, that's been a good place there. You made a choice, ladies. Even though he ticked you off, he made you so mad, he just, you just want to call your mom and tell him how bad he is. You know, you just, you just get all upset about it. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Hold that down and just hold his hand. And just walk it out until you enjoy and holding his hand. Hallelujah. Why? Because suddenly, you don't want to mess up your suddenly. I've said this before. Miracles don't happen in a mean church. The glory of God doesn't take place where there's a bunch of strife going on. But like we started, we started out on top shelf today. Hallelujah. The worship of God. Like, whoo, glory to God. Like we need that. It's like I, I kind of watch my wife, you know how she is. She's starting to, we're just worshiping God on the first song. She's starting to stagger. I go, it's all right. I got you. She's trying, to, she's trying to stay up. She's, she's out in the Holy Ghost just on her feet. Hallelujah. I, we want to walk in that. We want to walk in that. Listen, John said he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. What's, what's that fire about? It's a fire you can't see, but you will see the result of it. We can't see the Canadian fire, but we see the result of it. There's smoke every day here in the Midwest. But when you get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, those bad attitudes stop showing up. Why? Because the fire of God burned them up. That's why you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues is a benefit of being filled with the Holy Ghost. And you need to pray in the Holy Ghost every day throughout the day some. And when you start doing that, attitudes get out of the way. I don't know if you've ever thought this, but you go, you're not say you can't speak in tongues and think bad about your spouse. Because when you start speaking in tongues, you connect to heaven right now, and that's not allowed in heaven. So Paul told the Corinthian church, when you pray in an unknown tongue, you don't understand, but your spirit understands. God understands. There's a divine connection, and I want to encourage you. Now, if the husband and wife are walking around, shining on my hand on my you might need to sit down and talk a little bit more too because if it's that bad, but mm, it's okay. There came a sound. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. I want you to get into that. John said, he'll baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. When the fire hits, suddenly's happen. Yes. Amen. Suddenly. I want to tell you. I want to tell you, you'll walk in unity that you never saw, you never heard about, you never understood. You don't have to worry about things anymore. The fire of God knows how to get rid of fear. The fire of God knows how to get rid of anxiety. The fire of God knows how to get rid of arguing. I think about this. this you, you can talk to Natalie and I. It's like, I said, I'm going to guard the anointing. Sometimes I want to say something. And I, I just let a spirit of shut up come on me. Instead of talk up, I need to shut up. She said to me before, you just need to shut up. And I said, what are the chances? She goes, none. <laughs> when 
we're not in, in a bad way. I mean, suddenly, thank you. Sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind. In unity, in unity. When heaven is engaged, look at this. Suddenly, rushing, mighty wind, divine things start taking place. You get filled with the Holy Ghost, you get in unity with your spouse. You get in unity, you say, well, my, my spouse just he hates God, she hates God, doesn't want anything to do with God, doesn't like the church, doesn't like the pastor, doesn't like the people. What do you, do? you just do your part. Because part of it, if you're in, if you're in unity, you got part of it done. God will bless your part. Amen. God will bless your part. Now, suddenly, rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house. I just have to say, you get filled with the Holy Ghost, and your whole house will get full. You get filled with the Holy Ghost, your entire house will get full. You do your part, God will do his part. God's just waiting for a vessel. God's just waiting for a Holy Ghost vessel. Listen, the Holy Ghost, Brother Mike, is waiting for a vessel. The devil's waiting for a vessel, too. The devil's waiting for a vessel. The devil, we, we know that devils, Lord, we just say bring peace right now in the name of Jesus. Just peace right now in Jesus' name. The devil will fill animals. Demons can fill animals. The hogs, the herd of swine. Made them so crazy they ran off a cliff. That same group of devils lived in one man. Jesus even talked one place, said the devil got cast out of one man and went wandering through dry places and couldn't find a place to land and got seven devils worse than he was and went back to the man's house because he didn't do anything with his life. He didn't fill the house. It was cleaned up, but it was empty. Nathan? He needed to put something in the house. Amen. Amen. He, needed to put, he needed to put some joy. He needed to put some word in there. He needed to put some power of God in there. He needed to put some praise in there. He needed to put some prayer in there. He needed to get some things going on. To, when, when the devil comes, listen, I talk about being filled with the word of God all the time. Why do I do that? Because whatever your heart's full of is how you'll answer and Jesus told, he said, they're going to draw you before magistrates. You're going to come before people in authority. You're going to come before some mean people. He said, don't take thought what you're going to say. Don't plan ahead of time what you're going to say as far as rebuttals. The Holy Ghost will give you what to say in that same hour. I said, well, Pastor, that's trusting too much to God. <laughs> really? To the creator of the universe? that made that person that's going to be arguing with you out of dirt. Hmm. And the Holy Ghost that did the creating is also in you. And you're full of his word. He knows how to take his word and straighten out your enemies. Amen. The Bible, there's too many places said, and their enemies were brought low. How? Not by your own think, thinking, but by the word of God. Take no thought in your heart what you shall say, yeah. for the Holy Ghost shall give you in that very same hour exactly what to say. Now say what the Holy Ghost tells you to say and don't say anything else. A lot of times people pray for... Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to take just a little break here. When people come for prayer... Have in mind what you want to be prayed over or what you want us to agree with you about. Keep it brief. Keep it concise. And stay on track and don't veer. When you come for prayer, come for one thing. See, this is what I want you to agree with me about. Do not veer into six or seven other things. That's not God. I was in Arizona some years ago, I think in 2010, at a convention, and they'd asked me <clears throat> to join 
some people that were praying for folks. And I always get the ones. And so this lady come up in front of me, and I said, well, what do you want us to pray for you about? She goes, I don't really know. I said, well, okay, I'll come back to you later then. And, she's, and, and I did. And I said, well, what is it? She goes, well, uh, pray, pray for my husband. And I said, all right. And, and his cousin. And it was like and my husband's cousin, second cousin from his first mother by second dad. And like, what? One thing, tell me, what do you want to be prayed for? Because it was confusing already. And nothing's going to happen. Because there's nothing definitive about what you want God to do. T.D. Jakes would say, you need to come to the absolution of a definitive conclusion. (laughs) When you want God to do something for you, narrow it down, okay? Narrow it down, one thing. This one thing, this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth into those things which are before. This one thing. Jesus what are you going to do, Jesus? He said, I've set my face like a flint toward Jerusalem. That's my target. That's my goal. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to the cross. That's why today he was so focused. That's why we enjoy the finished work of the cross today. I'm saved. I'm born again. I don't have to worry about it. I accepted what he did on the cross. It's done. My sins are forgiven. I don't have to worry about it anymore. My name's in the Lamb's book of life. I don't have to worry about it anymore. That's because Jesus was determined with that one thing. You need to get determined about one thing. Be filled with the Spirit of God. And that way when you go through life, any one thing that comes against you can say, Holy Ghost, I need help. I need you to help me handle this. And if you say, well, I don't really get the answer right now, you pray in the Spirit. You say, well, what does praying in the Holy Ghost do if I pray in tongues for 10 minutes or 20 minutes or an hour? If it takes you an hour praying in the Holy Ghost, pray for an hour in the Spirit. What will happen is that you will find out, like John the Baptist, he must increase and I must decrease. When you're praying longer, you'll find you're decreasing and he's increasing. If you want to live through life victoriously, let him increase and you decrease. I've, I've heard people, I'm, I'm just kind of meddling a little bit now. I've heard people before, when God did something big and used them, they tell you, well, the Lord did a miracle in that person and he used me to lay hands on them and I said this to them and I prayed this over them and I did that over them. So you're wanting the glory? Mm. Praise God. All right. Filled all the house where they were sitting. I want our whole house full. I'm going to put you on notice. I want everybody in this church building to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. You see, Pastor, I don't believe in that. I want everybody in this place to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. Actually, those of you, if you're a critic and watching online, I want God to convict you and you get filled with the Holy Ghost and start speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. I believe God wants people praying in the Spirit. You say, Pastor, we're up against some powerful battles today, but not as big as my God, not as big as our God, not more powerful than the Holy Ghost, the creator of the universe. When you start believing God, they have to bow their knee to the name of Jesus. That's what the Word says. Every tongue and every knee will bow and confess to the glory of God the Father that Jesus is Lord, not the church, but Jesus. He's the Lord. He's all-powerful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. My Jesus. My Jesus. I'm going to try to quit, but I haven't even got any notes. I don't know. I, I haven't. Hmm. Okay. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire set upon each of them. 
We're the generation that wants to see a move of God. Amen. There appeared unto them. Say something appeared to them. The, the fire appeared to them. If you want miracles to appear to you, you got to go back to verse 1. They were all in one accord in one place. You want miracles in your house? Get in one accord. Then the suddenlies happen. Suddenly sounds from heaven come. Suddenly he heaven shows up. Suddenly. Suddenly. Do all of those things in right sequence, in right order, and then things will start appearing to you. Hallelujah. I believe the Holy Ghost is teaching some things today. And it said upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I like that. Verse 1, they were all in one accord in one place. Verse 4, they were all filled. <clears throat> some things appeared. Some things happened suddenly. Praise God. Whew. A rushing mighty wind. There's nothing slow about God. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Going to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now it stops there. It begins to tell how many people were in Jerusalem that came in to observe the feast days. <clears throat> they heard there were over 11 different languages defined by the people that were there at Jerusalem. As people spoke in tongues. Some, some heard them speak in their language. To the speaker, it was an unknown tongue, but God designated some hearers that could understand what was being said. Now, after that, Peter was anointed to preach. He got filled with the Holy Ghost too. He was part of that group that got filled with the Holy Ghost. He wasn't filled yet. Till verse 4. But after verse 4, he was able to preach a short message and 3,000 people got saved. Before he was with Jesus and denied him. Another place, he was with Jesus and got convicted and jumped out of the boat naked. Because he felt his physical nakedness, he was ashamed. And because his physical nakedness brought him shame, he also experienced spiritual shame by disappointing God. But now, when he gets filled with the Holy Ghost, he has no shame, and he has no fear, and he stands up and boldly proclaims the name of Jesus in such a manner that over 3,000 people got convicted of their sins and accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior after a five-minute sermon. That's how suddenly God can turn things around in your life. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, the power of God knows how to get in this church. Oh, yes, it does. I want our worship team to come back. And I believe the power of God is going to move on some people today and fill you with the Holy Ghost. I believe the fire of God is going to burn up some anxiety. There's, there's no reason for you to be suffering with anxiety and fear. That's, that's the tactic of the enemy. I've had it before. You've had it before. Listen, whatever you're going through, there's nothing new under the sun. But everything that's happened has been healed before. Everything you're going through has, somebody had it, experienced it, was touched by God and delivered from it. Hallelujah. I believe God wants to do some great work today. I believe he wants to do some great work in you because you've got a great work to do. You might have been one that held back and was shy when talking about Jesus, but when you get full of the Holy Ghost, shyness will be burned up. Oh, yes. Your talent can be unlocked. Your gifts can be unlocked by being full of the Holy Ghost. See, Pastor, you're making... Are you making a real big deal out of this? Oh, yeah, I am. It's a big deal to me. My wife can tell you, I, I pray in tongues most of the way to church. Every time we go into church. 
Amen. We got sanctified vehicles. They're rolling prayer rooms. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to have one. You can have a rolling prayer room all by yourself. 